Hello and welcome to African Living Abroad. I am Jamhuri. I'm here to share my international experiences, build bridges between cultures, with the hope of making the world a better place. I consider myself a social observer, a commentator, an interpreter of these social events, and a storyteller. In my video of 2021, I felt uh, very strongly that Africa needed to stand on her own feet and to declare her own sovereignty. That video, I titled it, Is Africa Too Immature to Fly? And I will attach that video to this video and because it speaks for itself and it follows the rise of African leaders, especially uh, William Bruto, who I dedicated a video to recently. I felt that the immaturity of Africa to fly was because it was too dependent on the West. It was too tied up in debt. It was too tied up in Western ideology. And uh, Africa was, or, and still is majorly controlled to the point that the leaders really have to risk their lives to, to break free. And I felt in that video uh, that I, that I uh, made like, uh, at that time that I felt that Africa needed a trigger, a major trigger in order to separate itself and to free itself or herself economically. It is now clear that Africa has matured. Africa has come of age and Africa is breaking free. And that major trigger has arrived. And it is not that Africa cost, but it was caused by the Western uh, way of life that was being pushed into Africa in order for Africa to get all the benefits that they are used to getting. They had to bend their rules, their values, their culture, and it reached a point where Africa said, no more, we draw the line. In my about uh, 40 years of living outside Africa, living in Europe and now North America or Canada, I have lived thoroughly under multiculturalism and nobody forced me to live like that. It is my choice. And I realize that's the place that I thrive the most, a place that has great diversity of people in, in ethnicities and cultures and religions. And uh, it really helped to um, expand my thoughts about humanity. And I realize that humanity is one that we can be fooled by all the looks, cultural looks, ethnic looks, but at the core, people have the basic need in life. And if you've never tried to live in a situation like that, you will always be calling people, thinking that people are different. Despite the fact that people are the same at, at the root of it, at the heart of humanity, there are things that make them really different. And those are cultural values, uh, political values, uh, religious values, and other values that they add to their life that sets them apart from who they are as humanity. And those are the things actually that cause um, conflict and wars. And these are the things that has pushed Africa now to break away. It just dawned on me today that that is the trigger that has caused Africa to stand on her own feet and to be mature. And we hear the values being debated now in the parliaments, for instance, the parliament of Ghana, the parliament of Kenya. And uh, I will have to mention this, that the, different, the difference is that the West has pushed and has been pushing the LGBTQ values into Africa and forcing Africa to sign um, contracts based on their belief or ups, up, uh, embracing those values. And Africa is saying, no, this is not part of our life. This is not part of our values. This is, uh, this is not something that we want to make an integral part of our life. 
And uh, listening to this uh, debate, I realized this is the thing that has triggered Africa to stand on her own, on her own feet and to break away. And uh, if the Western countries are going to fall and be kicked out of Africa, it is their own fault. And I think that Africa needed something like that on many other things. At this time, in 2023, a lot of things are happening and power is shifting away from the West. And there's this term called hegemony. It's a new term being spoken about lately. And it is um, when a country or an empire pushes its values into other countries and rules them from afar and um, punishes them if they do not obey uh, the rules of the so-called uh, rulers of the world. And uh, this again ties into the um, colonial way of thinking. And uh, it's very interesting that with this time that Africa is not finding it hard to stand up to the West and say, you know what, we can stay hungry. You cannot bribe us with food or anything else. We can survive. We are survivors. And uh, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to what the West is going to do going forward. Because when Africa shuts her doors to the West, that will be the end of the economic uh, progress of the West. They would have to fend for themselves now because Africa is going to um, put her muscle up and draw the lines and say how they want to be treated, how they would like to trade, how... Um, you know, they want to develop their own values and belief systems without being interfered with because Africa is saying, we are watching you. We, we are not, we are not the people, we are not the kind of people who come and impose our values on other countries, but you are doing that to us. And that is wrong. That is not fair. And our relationship has broken up or we are breaking away from you. And we don't care about the consequences that we will put on our countries. We can survive. And we as Africa, we are going to unite with one voice because our values are the same. Our belief system is the same. And we are going to stand up to you. And you can do whatever you want. We do not care. So I watched my video that I titled, um, Is Africa Too Immature to Fly? And in it, it seemed like it was a prophetic message from me to Africa. And I would encourage you to really watch it uh, and, and see what you think. And, and please comment on it. Say what you need to say. And I would like to hear your ideas and ideas for Africa, your advice for Africa. And let's keep watching. Let's keep hearing this. And... If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to it so you can hear more of my comments because I, I just like to watch the world, what's going on, and I have this urge to just comment because I have had so many experiences uh, living in Kenya, living in um, Europe, living in uh, Canada, and I'm exposed to so many cultures and religions, and uh, some things just... Uh, force me to comment on, to say what I think and to throw in my, um, my ideas. And isn't that exactly what foreign governments are doing in Africa or have done to Africa? And I would say from my experience of living abroad for 35 years, nowhere have I seen uh, countries in the West allowing themselves to be treated the way Africa has allowed herself to be treated. I mean, in Africa, foreign governments and companies, they run, you know, unhindered. They are the boss. And I think that Africans are too submissive. They are too fearful to face them, even though they know something is not right. Something is imbalanced, but they, don't, they do not confront them. And I've in this video, I'm going to ask a lot of questions. I never asked lots of questions when I was in school. I thought my questions were too dumb. I didn't want to expose what I thought was dumbness. But no, asking questions leads to great answers. So now I am asking questions as an adult. What would ha happen if Africa 
was to go and mine in China or hunt the Chinese panda and the monkeys there and the uh, pangolin. What if Africa set up factories in China, hire the, the people there and abuse them, take away their human rights, overwork them? How would that, that country respond? How would the people do, uh, respond? Why doesn't Africa set up military bases in Asia, in Israel, or the Middle East, in North America, and in Europe? Why not? And why doesn't Africa go and mine minerals in other countries and pollute their waters, their rivers, their forests, cut down their forests? Why not? Is Africa too incapable to do that? Is Africa too uncivilized to do that? I believe Africa could do that, is very capable of doing that. But Africa doesn't know it. Africa is too asleep to do that. But Africa is also a civilized continent and a hospitable continent as part of the culture. So that when you are a guest in somebody else's country, you don't misbehave and do things that you wouldn't do in your own home. So many of us, the children of Africa who live in the diaspora, we live by the rules in these countries. We behave ourselves. You know, we don't come and mistreat people or act really bad. We know what our culture is. So as we ask these questions of, about Africa, we haven't even talked about diseases that, are, that we know have been manufactured in labs and set out into Africa with the intention of what? I'll ask a question. What if Africa was so underpopulated? What would happen? Who would occupy Africa? And what interest is there for those diseases, deadly diseases to be set off in African soil? And we haven't even asked the question of assassinations of presidents. Between 2019 and 2021, how many presidents have disappeared all of a sudden, mysteriously died, healthy presidents? And how many have died in Asia, in, in North America, in Europe, mysteriously like that? We need to ask the big questions, deep, deep, deep questions. And we, the children of the diaspora, African diaspora, are here to ask those questions and to give back to Africa what we see, what we have learned. And so I give you four strategies that I think could help Africa to fly, to be unchained. And one, Africa, recognize that you have all the resources you, you need. You have all the minerals, you have the forest, agricultural and human resources. And Africa, with the 54 countries together, you can create, and this is number two, your own African health organization. You, you know the medicines. African Monetary Fund, you can create. African United Nations. And do away with the present African Union. In my opinion, the African Union doesn't work. I think it's been compromised, it's been infiltrated, and other countries are just knocking on the door of the African Union to come and sit in and listen in to the secrets of Africa so that Africa can just be paralyzed before it even begins to walk. So assert, Africa can assert herself and say, no, we, we will do our own business. Number three, stop the dependency on foreign loans and aid and foreign military. I mean, these 54 countries, really, they can work together to create a mighty military and create their own network, their own, you know, you can create your own factories but my biggest question is, what would it take to shock Africa out of slumber, out of comfort, out of uh, codependence to the West, just the same way that I shocked those little fat uh, birds out of their nest and they flew? What, what will be the catalyst to shock Africa? 
Will it be a revolution? Will it be a reformation? I believe so, because I, I have the feeling by watching African news and reading about what's going on in Africa, that Africans have had enough of being mistreated by every foreign country. And Africa, that could be the things, you know, the dissatisfaction of the people that might cause a, a, a reaction, could be the catalyst. We shall wait and see. But Africa needs to shift into her greatness because Africa is great. 2021, as we speak, has brought us a new era. Some of you have seen, but if you haven't seen, I want to ask you, don't you see, don't you feel it? And the pandemic, as bad as it was, it was the vehicle of change for everyone and for change in the world. Don't you see? Don't you see? So I would say seize the opportunity. The time is now. And once you rise, I would really say that Africa needs to rise at her own pace, do things in her own style. Because if you rush to be like the West, to be like Europe, to be like North America, because that's, uh, Africans like to, to live like that, and Africa wants to live like that. But I think that would be going too fast because you are not the West. You have your own way of doing things and you've been suppressed for so many years. So when, when you decide to rise up, I think you need to bear in mind that you have your own pace and you're like a child beginning to, to, to walk independently without your hand being held. And you can do it, Africa. You can do it. Last but not least, Number four, develop self-respect, please, and a healthy self-identity in terms of international relations and economic deals. Be an equal partner and a collaborator and play the economic game very equally by creating your own products and processing them in your own factories and selling them to the other countries the same way they take your resources, manufacture them and bring them and sell them back to you. That is not fair. And elect elders, that will bring you what you want because the, many of the present elders, I mean leaders are sellouts, you know, and they work for other people. I don't think they work necessarily for Africa. They have been bought. And I have homework for you. Study African history, your history, to discover your greatness. And I thank God, I'm so grateful for the historian, African-American historian, who recently passed away in August, just a couple of weeks ago. And uh, he did a great history and research of the greatness of African people. His name was uh, Dr. Runoko Rashidi, and there he reveals the impact of Africa that the world has not seen. And when you follow and listen to his uh, stories, his teachings and interviews, even on YouTube, as an African, first of all, you will get a crisis. You will be in disbelief. And before you get to accept your identity, it is revolutionary. So I don't know of any other way that Africa can rise and you define who you are, not what others defined you, how others define you, because they have defined you for too long. When you get to know your real identity, you will be shocked in a good way. So I wanna thank you for your time. And if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do uh, create an, a YouTube account if you haven't done so and share this message and click the bell notification bell there below so that you can be notified about my next video so i want to challenge you as an african or whoever is watching this video the, there is it's time for change and i ask you to step into your passion do what you've been called to do despite the fear despite the challenges and i challenge you to to fly and i i accept that challenge for myself as well so in the meantime, I will do the work that I feel so passionate about 
talking about these things, these events, and challenging people to rise, to be better, the best we can be. So until next time, bye.